guys. We've got the leadership coming back at five this afternoon. Yes. Then we begin this uh, uh, blockade. Then uh, we'll continue the surveillance. I uh, would anticipate two or three things. First, that Khrushchev will s uh, make a statement that any attack upon Cuba will be... Re uh, Thanks. Uh, so what you're just listening to is a recording of JFK recording his notes, uh, dictating his notes during a Cuban Missile Crisis. This is just one small example. It's part of a large collection of 200,000 pages of text, 1,500 images, 1,250 audio recordings and moving images that were gathered through collaboration with many well-known organizations and with Iron Mountain, where we preserved and digitized all of that content. Um, we are often known for our information storage and management solutions. Most people don't know that we got our start preserving historic and vital records. Hi, I'm Gary Mancini from Iron Mountain. Hi, my name is Kevin Starner. I'm the Senior Director of Sales Enablement for Iron Mountain. And Gary and I are so excited to be here with you this afternoon and to finish up the day. And we we're trying to think, how do we get this thing started off right? Because you heard, you heard a lot of people talk about getting off to a quick start, that hot opening. Tim mentioned it earlier today. So I asked Gary, He's a sales technology guy. He's got a teaching background. He's got some creative ways to get this thing started. So I said, Gary, come up with a cool video, something that talks and speaks to this alignment. And I have to tell you, that was a big mistake because Gary thinks he's funny. <laughs> I find him a little twisted. I'm just saying, just saying. Uh, and you be the judge because you got to see what he gave me the first time around. Can we roll that first video, please? Come on. Come on. Chuck Storm, I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. A police have... Oh, God. I, you know, I don't care who you are. That right there, that's funny. Uh, well, it, Gary, it's funny, but it doesn't capture the essence of this alignment video. This alignment presentation, it doesn't capture it at all. Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought you said misalignment. I, I, no. I thought there were great examples of this. This is about alignment. aligning the buyer's process with the sales process. So I gave Gary another shot, right? So uh, he came up with something a little bit better. I think this actually captured it. Can we roll the second video, please? So what a contrast, huh? I mean, that's alignment. And I, I just wonder how many times it took them to get that right. <laughs> I, I want to know how many guys in red helmets it took them to get it just right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they look pretty happy at the end. Well, how happy did they look, Gary? Happier than a bodybuilder directing traffic, I think. <laughs> All right, so, so you can tell we have no fun at work whatsoever, right? So clearly this is a presentation about alignment. It's about getting it right. It's about bringing the seller and the buyer closer together. And think about it. Imagine yourself as a frontline salesperson. Imagine that you have the ability to line your actions, your materials, your research, everything that you're doing to the way that the buyer buys and understanding exactly what they were thinking and what they were doing. That would be awesome, right? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Well, I'm going to show you some of the things that we're doing today and give you a little flash forward, if you will. And I want you to meet Beth. Beth is an Iron Mountain sales professional. 
And whether, Beth is awesome by the way, whether she is on the train working at a coffee shop or at her desk, Beth is always trying to find ways to get in early with her customers. She doesn't want to become one of those one of three. She wants to be the one that's developing the buy-in vision. She wants to be right there at the very beginning. So Beth takes advantage of all the alignment of her marketing professionals and her sales team and takes advantage of the technology that's been invested in her. One of the things through Tech Target, it's an opportunity to take a look at that digital body language of those customers and find out what they're doing. This is one of Beth's customers today, and she has the ability to see what they're looking at from Iron Mountain. But she can also see what the competitors are looking at, or what she's looking at from the competitor's site, said a different way. One of the things that catches Beth's eye is a piece of collateral that this uh, customer's looking at is how to cut costs without cutting corners. That's awesome. So what does Beth do? She decides that this is the right moment to get in touch with that buyer. So she, she goes into Savo. She goes into selling the Iron Mountain Way within Savo, and she takes a look based on where that buyer is. She wants to do some more research. So she's able to, right from that slide, she's able to go into LexisNexis and start understanding a little bit more about all the different contacts, what they do, their industry, their function, that company specifically, because she wants to tailor her message to that buyer. So she comes out, she takes another look at selling the Iron Mountain Way and understanding that they want to cut costs without sacrificing or risking their program, she remembers that there's a teaching script that we've developed that's understanding the hidden costs of records and information management. Now she's delivered this before, but she wants to brush up. So she goes and clicks within uh, BrainShark right from selling the Iron Mountain Way, and she's able to take a look at that teaching script. That whiteboard presentation, the scripting, as well as the picture, and understand and get caught up on what she's delivering. So now she's ready to go out and have that presentation, but again, she wants to go back and make sure that she's supporting those conversations and she's able to absorb those conversations through her customer-facing materials. So she goes back into selling the Iron Mountain Way on the right-hand side looking at customer-facing materials and comes back with a list of assets. Now, Beth is very special. She is an insight-led seller. She is a challenger. She wants to deliver insight and she wants to drive this decision. So she wants to bring information to them because she's not going to leave it to chance. She's not going to wait until they're 57 or 60 or 70, depending on which statistics you believe today. She's going to make sure that she's not part of that statistic. So she gets the right information, the right time for the right person to have those conversations. What a great world, right? What a perfect opportunity. Yeah. So, I think so. Yeah, so that's what we mean when we say selling the Iron Mountain Way. You know, with this type of alignment for the sales organization, knowing that you have the right information being delivered to the right person at the right time, you're, and, and the rep is creating the vision for the deal, that buying process is in the control of the rep, those deal sizes increase, close ratios go up, and you know, we're really just getting started with this. So we really need to take a walk back in time to see how we got here. Before Savo, before sales enablement, before sales technology at Iron Mountain, we were in trouble. Yeah, so we got started about two and a half years ago with sales enablement and sales technology. And Savo was a, a distant future from that. And we recognized that we had a problem because we had a selling system where our customers were smarter than our sales reps. They knew more about our organization and the solutions that we offered in some cases than the reps that showed up. They obviously knew more about the competition as well. And this created challenges because our buyers were evolving but we were not. So we saw an opportunity that we needed to get in there and make some changes. So we realized that first of all, having the same types of sellers, those talking brochures and those solution sales reps that got us to where we were two and a half years ago, they weren't going to help us continue to move forward because as an organization, we wanted to be you know, thought of as thought leaders. We wanted to bring that to our customers. And at the time, if we didn't evolve, it wasn't going to happen. And that, that came very evident to us when we got the survey results back from our voice of the customer. What they shared with us is, hey, you guys are doing a great job. You're fine. But I need you to bring more thought leadership to us. I need you to push us a little bit, challenge us in what we're doing. I can't tell you how deeply that cut and that hurt because we prided ourselves on bringing thought leadership and educating our customers. We founded several major industry trade associations and continue to drive that through our customers. So to hear that, it really was a huge reality check to us. 
it made us stop and, re and really reflect on why that was happening. So one of the things that was happening was that marketing was creating materials that were going unused by the sales organization. Does that happen in here at all? Right? So all of you face that. I mean, these are statistics that you've seen, that you've been a part of, that you've probably seen them from different sources and slightly different numbers, but they're true. You're putting a lot of work and effort into creating these fantastic materials that go unused. And then on the flip side, the sales organization is marketing doesn't create anything that's good. I have to create my own stuff. I have to customize it. And they're spending all this time creating messaging that is not consistent. You have sales reps that are out there delivering different types of messages. There's no consistency. Marketing's delivering different uh, messages from a different voice on web versus what's in print. And despite all of our efforts from wanting to deliver thought leadership, what we were really delivering was messaging schizophrenia. I can't tell you how clumsy this made us as an organization because without that repetition, how do you get to brand recognition if you're saying different things every single time to the same customers? You can never truly get to that. So we recognized that we had a problem we needed to fix right away. Job one, let's get sales and marketing together aligned on a common messaging platform and messaging methodology. We hired corporate visions. We brought in and started to, uh, to deliver power messaging. Four people on my team were certified to deliver to the entire selling organization, marketing organization, product management organization, everyone on the same playing field. It was so popular that even the senior level executives just said, hey, I want to go through this class as well. What we also said was marketing, you have to deliver. You own developing the message in the same way that we're teaching people how to deliver. So from that perspective, once you develop that, we need this concept of the core messaging document, that single source of truth that you can take and then populate every piece of content that you have out there from uh, solution briefs to web copy to interactive messaging guides for the sales professionals. You had to have that consistency because repetition is retention. So the next thing we did was we said, you know what, talking brochures, solution sales reps, not good enough. If we're going to bring thought leadership, we need to push back on our customers and we need to deliver insight. We need to challenge those status quo. So we joined the corporate executive board, actually it's the CEB now, but at the time it was the corporate executive board and the SEC, and we got everything we possibly could on Challenger and really started to go crazy on developing that into our culture from the sales organization through everyone developing insights and developing messaging. What we didn't realize at the time is how brilliantly power messaging and, and Challenger really do work so well together. And for the, how many people are, are down the path of Challenger, you're, you're doing that? And keep your hands up if you're also doing power messaging. Okay, so you, you agree with that? All right, you buy that? Okay. So very exciting things. I mean, the, the sales organization and the entire organization were so thirsty, so hungry. They, they, they loved every little bit of it. They wanted more. They wanted more insight. They wanted more uh, information, more training. They wanted more of those tasty morsels that they could get their hands on and take and tailor to their companies while staying true to the methodology. What, too much? <laughs> no? All right, so when you start making changes like this in your selling system, it becomes readily apparent when there's something missing. Here we were developing all this velocity around power messaging and challenger. But we had a problem first with our proposal writing tool, something we call Proposal Wizard. That's a nice segue, Gary. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Not as nice as the guy from last night that's with the, uh, the jukebox, yeah, but that's yeah. a nice segue. Yeah. Uh, so because Proposal Wizard is a desktop application for us, it's been around for about 14 or 15 years. Uh, it suffers from this thing where we update it quarterly and reps all across the world have to download it and install it on their desktops. And so as we started working our way through all of this new messaging, it became readily apparent to us that here we were doing all this work around messaging, but our proposal tool wasn't up to date. It wasn't delivering that new message. It wasn't sequencing content the way it should. So we didn't realize how much of a problem that was, and we went out looking for a solution. <laughs> and the funny thing is, uh, it was kind of like a twofer. Uh, we, we found a sales enablement platform in our search for a proposal tool. And like that twofer, it's sort of like going to a fight and having a hockey game break out. <laughs> and you can see Beth here, our, our sales rep, looks like a hockey fan. I think she's a Blackhawks fan. Probably. Any Blackhawks yeah. fan in the, in the crowd? Yeah. I figured that would have been met with a little bit. Some people from Milwaukee or other places, parts of the country. Not so, Blackhawks fans. So 
here we were. Um, it was time for us to launch Savo, and we did that last July. We called it phase one because we were doing the sales enablement part of this first with an eye toward doing proposals later on in, in a phase two. So we created power messaging playgrounds like this so we could create a community of grabbers and objection reframes and big opportunities, uh, big pictures. We created uh, challenger sites where we had RSS feeds and content on demand. We created uh, manager toolkits for helping these managers in the field, enabling their folks out in the field. And we also created product home pages. Our marketing folks went crazy on this. They moved all of their content out of a myriad of SharePoint sites and onto Sava. And sales enablement was busy creating all kinds of programs. In this case, we have an example of an onboarding program for new reps, the Go program. Interestingly enough, one of the problems we had, and we had far too many discussions about this, far too many, uh, what were we going to call our instance of Savo? We, all these names came up, Focus and Ethos and Iris and Insight and even Ovas. I'll leave that with you for a second. Do you mind, do you mind if I share the story? Yeah, I, I think you should. Do you guys know what we decided to call it? Yeah, Savo. Yeah. But do you know why? Because it's so much fun to say. I don't know what it is about the word Savo, but every time I hear it, I want to shout it. I want to yell out, Savo! <laughs> Just a quick story. Back in January, we delivered our national conference. We had over 800 people in the room. And as we were go going through the presentation, we, we said, look, every time that you hear the word Savo, I want to hear it. I want to hear you yell it. Talk about getting people out of a hammock. If you have someone that's sleeping in the room and they hear 800 people yelling out, Savo, they're going to wake up. It was awesome. The, the rest of the four days, we had people coming up into breakouts in the hallway, at the bar. They're yelling across the, the bar the whole way. In fact, I just heard a story last night that someone from Savo was in Boston walking down the street to get a coffee. And they had their backpack. And they heard from the distance, Savo! <laughs> so I would love it. And I'm sure that the sponsors of this event would love it too. If we could get this room right here on the count of three to yell it out. What do you think? You guys can do it? On the count of three? One, two, three. Salvo! Oh! Awesome. The rest of the, the, the presentations tomorrow, everything, you're, it's licensed. Go ahead and yell it out. <laughs> They're going to love it. So it was just the start. Yeah. For technology. Yeah, it was just the start. We're working on Savo, but we had so many other things going on. And by the way, this is a Zen image alert. <laughs> I think we have another one in here somewhere. I, I really like this image, and I, I'll leave it at that. Um, so we had a lot of stuff going on, particularly in Salesforce.com, where it was a focal point for all of this development. As you can see, account planning, development plans, at-risk assessments, dashboards. We've got learning programs based on BrainShark. We have prospecting tools on LexisNexis, as Kevin mentioned earlier. We've got a customer reference program that we've stood up using Boulder Logic technology, e-signatures with DocuSign. And we built our own auto account setup so that reps can get their business in and up and serviced as soon as possible. And then lastly, we're standing up a contract management system real soon. Yeah, and you saw not only sales operations, but also marketing. They were investing in technology into the selling system as well. You saw the tech target and understanding the digital body language of our customers. We were adding so much to add capacity and efficiency and effectiveness into our selling system. It was a perfect scenario, right? Wouldn't you want to come and sell in that type of scenario? It was awesome. Well, not exactly. In our quest to create that perfect selling system and that, current, that, that perfect selling situation, we actually made it more confusing. We had so much information that was in there. It was like a Cirque show. Was, you, you knew there was some awesome stuff in there, but you were missing something because you didn't know where to focus. It was a challenge for us. So, so let's simplify here. Let's, you, you've seen a curve similar to this earlier in the day today. Let's think about this buyer-seller process and the alignment that we're talking about that we're seeking all the time here. So imagine that this blue line is that process. And then below it, there are some red dots that represent all of the tasks that a rep has to perform, all the systems that they have to be able to access and master. And then further, there's some blue spots here too that represent all the things that the buyer has to do. They have their own process, of course. 
So what we're after is to return productive selling time to the reps. And we do that by optimizing this process, by synchronizing and integrating systems, and also along the way, helping the buyer to improve their process as well, because of course we're delivering assets out of Savo in particular that help that process along. Look, we, we knew we had some challenges. We had come a long way, and we had a messaging methodology and platform. We had a sales uh, methodology as well in Challenger. We had so much technology, but what we lacked still were those steps of the sale, that process and that framework to really tie it all together. So one of the first things that we did was we sat down with marketing and we said, look, we need to come up with a common language for the buyer steps. What are you using? How can we get to those common steps and make sure that we're aligned there? Then we sat down with all of our sales leaders from all the different segments that we work within, and we asked them, what are the different types of actions that your people are doing today that they should be doing that align up to these steps? We went into best practices, we searched the SEC, we searched all of those best practice companies that are out there that have had selling organizations for years and years, and said, how do we take the best from there that applies to us and create that framework? And that's how we got to selling the Iron Mountain way. Now, we're all the same. Everyone that's in here is the same. Raise your hand if you have salespeople. Let me, let me, let me say it a different way. Raise your hand if you don't have salespeople in your organization. All right, we're not the same. All right. And if you have buyers and customers, raise your hand. Right? So we're all the same. The job is very easy. You've got to keep the customers that you have. You have to get more revenue out of them. And then you have to find new relationships as well, right? And in that process, you have a team of people in that selling system that are supporting the selling efforts. You also have a lot of different processes that you've probably put in place to create those consistencies to be able to create scalability within that system. And maybe you've even invested in some technology along the way. Maybe not as much as we have in the last two and a half years, but at some point when you take all of those people, process, and technology and you wrap it in a common language of challenger and power messaging, and put it into a framework that holds it all together, that aligns each of those individual steps and people and processes into a process that aligns the buyer's journey with the sales process, that's where you get that alignment. And that's what we call selling the Iron Mountain way. Want to take them through a little bit more? Yeah, let's, so remember, we asked you to go back two and a half years with us. So we're going to come back to the present. And this is selling the Iron Mountain way today. What it represents is a framework. We've used that word a lot. And we've used the word alignment a lot. So this framework allows us to put the process together so that content owners can tag things properly. That means that those assets show up in our Selling the Iron Mountain pages where they should. And it's all synchronized with this whole buyer-seller alignment that we've created. So here on this page, for example, we have, we're on the prospecting stage. You can see that there's an image map at the top of this screen. And the sales stages are indicated above. And they go from left to right. There's also an icon there with a couple of people, and you can see that they've just moved as we've gone from the prospecting stage to the qualifying stage. So they will continue to move, and the rep can click through those as well. But what, what we're really after here is, again, to align that buyer's process with the seller's process. So in this case, we're saying in the left-hand column, here's an indication of what your customer is likely doing. In the middle column, what you should be doing. So there's links here, for example, to systems that you should be using, forms that you should use, all those things that are necessary for you to sync up with what the buyer is doing at that point in time. And then lastly, in the third column, we've got customer-facing assets. Again, these things are configured in such a way that those assets come to the surface. Those are their links to advanced searches, links to other important assets that are relevant and connected to that sales, that sales and buyer stage. As you scroll down into the system, you're going to see that there's stage exit requirements at the bottom. What this does for sales leaders is create that common playing ground, that level of consistency across the board, across all segments, so that we have a consistent process for forecasting as well as pipeline management. And it's important when you think about how we've restructured and reorganized our selling organization and all the different groups and, and and how we've gotten uh, to that, that level. I'm going to share a couple numbers with you that really tell that story. 600, 14, and 4203. So 600 represents the number of selling, face-to-face uh, -face sales uh, folks that are in our selling system today. What's interesting about that is in addition to that, we have another 500 
Savo users, content creators, content consumers that are using up licenses. In fact, the demand for Savo today in our organization far outstrips the number of licenses that we have. Can someone explain to me why the Savo people are smiling so big? Don't get all excited, Pete. Yeah, Pete, calm down down there. You know, just, we're, we're not going to get any more. All right, so, so 14. 14 represents the number of sales segments and verticals that we have, that we've split off into. And each of them have different solutions that they're selling, different assets that they're using as a part of that. 4203, because of the demand in the system and how we're using Savo as that single source of truth for the organization, it has been met with tremendous demand from others in the organization to have that as the place where salespeople go so that they're not out looking for SharePoint information and all over the place. So we have over 4,200 assets that are currently in Savo. There's another number here, and that's 1.5. Um, that represents the number of full-time equivalents, people that we have dedicated to Savo. Um, so I'm going to make it a little more personal. And Murr, would you raise your hand? So Murr is 100% dedicated to Savo proposals. She's only one person, though. She's just only to be clear, just, we're not <laughs> trying to say it's just, uh, just one. Uh, so one person dedicated to proposals, half of a person dedicated to all the other work that needs to be done to keep the platform running. And so you might say, you know, that, that doesn't sound right. You guys are talking about doing a lot of stuff here, so where's the rest of the work being done? How's it getting done? Well, mostly it's divide and conquer. So that's our approach to this. So if you look at the teams that we've assembled that are focused on getting this work done in Savo, let's start with sales enablement, for example. We mentioned programs earlier, the, the Go program for onboarding reps. So they're developing content, doing program management. Then we've got product marketing and product management. So I mentioned them earlier as well. Um, so these are the folks who own the content. They're the ones who are really on the hook for tagging all of this content, for creating the content that's necessary to, to support that whole process of selling the Iron Mountain Way. Um, and then there is the sales technology team. This is my team. We do administration, configuration, support, and consulting. And when I say consulting, I mean we will sit down with content owners and review what it is, what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Some of our product homepages are much more detailed and much deeper than others. And it has a lot to do with the different business units and the products that they sell. And then lastly, we have a core team. That team is made up of representatives from the other team. And what we're after here is to establish the standards that we need uh, and also just to keep this machine calibrated so that it's working well. Now, you notice that half the slide's missing here. And that's, there's a reason for that. I, you know, I, I'm talking about divide and conquer in terms of getting this work done. And so, of course, like lots of other, our other slides here, I, we went out looking for images. And so I go searching for an image for divide and conquer. And this is what I got. This came up on the first page in Google. So I'm, I'm not making this up. He's not, he's not making it I'm up. I'm not making, this is my new favorite rap artist. That he might be making up. I, I'm, I am dead serious. This guy's name is Savo. Uh, I like that. Hey. We're bringing back the high five too. I, yeah, we're bringing back. Um, so, so Savo's uh, album, I'm not sure if this is the newest one, but I'm hooked. Um, we just, we can't let these guys go. We, we're going to have to share no, some we're of not, No, we're not letting you leave until you I, and sample I, I think a we've got some high def video here. Uh, we do. Yeah. Uh, we do. Well, let's roll that video. We are so hip. Tragically. Tragically hip, yes. yes. So while Sava the rap artist may not appeal to everyone in this room, aligning your buyer's process and your selling process should, right? Because we have a lot of marketing, a lot of salespeople in the room, and finding ways to better align and, and navigate your organization should be a, a, one of the top things that you're doing. And think about all the people that it impacts within your selling system, all of the different types of learning styles from visual to auditory and kinesthetic. Think about new people. Getting someone brand new off the street up to speed in your organization is one of the most difficult things that we find at our company. How many of you experience the same thing? Right? So think about understanding when, just in time learning, just in case learning, when you should be using certain systems, when you should be using certain assets, and having that every step along the way. 
And then you've got your self-directed learners as well as your frontline sales leaders. Imagine as a frontline sales leader that you could understand and diagnose a gap that you have in one of your sales reps at any tenure, quickly go in, get the information that you need to help support that growth and development, and move on. Those are the types of things that we're continuing to do, we're continuing to evolve, and I, I know one of the questions that we've gotten when we've shared this with some other folks that we network with is, you know, how do you, where do you start? Like, where do you even begin? So let, let me make an observation. I, I know we got you out of the hammock here with Savo, my buddy. Um, so we're almost at drinks, so hang in there for a second. Um, so what you have here on screen is an image of a college campus. And, Many of you, I'm sure, have, have uh, experienced this, and maybe you just haven't paid attention to it, but if you go to most college campuses, you're going to find that there's a network of sidewalks. And you're going to also find that, for example, there's an area where there's dirt paths that are worn. And so the folks who are designing the campus, you know, they put the basic set of sidewalks in, and then they just sort of watch student behavior, because the students are going to create the best paths, right? Sort of similar to what we're doing in Sava. Um, so, Eventually, all the buildings are built and um, the network of sidewalks becomes solidified. It becomes finalized. And that's the way we think about Savo. So we launched Savo, again, last July, with some sidewalks, air quotes, sidewalks, in place. So basic navigation, basic product home pages, and then we watched. And we paid attention to behavior. And we had a good collection of tag lists, um, but those continue to evolve. And you know, it's kind of interesting as we watch that user behavior. And our frame of reference, our, our rep's frame of reference, was coming from a multitude of SharePoint sites. How much they were conditioned to click through folders, directories, folders, folders, more, to, to eventually browse to an asset that was important to them. So we essentially, came, they came to us into Sava with the expectation that all of the assets in Sava were going to come to the surface on product home pages and in selling the Iron Mountain Way pages. So we had that to deal with. And so what we started to do is to measure their activity. We're looking at which documents were being up, uh, downloaded most, which pages were being accessed most or least, which users were most active, least active. We went and talked with them. Why are you not using this, this system? Why, folks that are really active, what are you doing so we can share your experiences with other people? So we talked with them about their activity, and now we use those metrics to help us to build things like guides and widgets and templates. As a matter of fact, I just got an email yesterday morning from one of our product marketing folks who's just busy building new templates for uploading assets to deliver insights to his sales team. So the bottom line is this has all been a journey for us. And it's evolving. It will continue to evolve. And Kevin? Yeah, no, take, I mean, we, we, were, we were reflecting on this journey over the last couple of days and, and how far we've come in not only, the, not only the 10 months with Savo, but certainly the two and a half years. And there's a couple of different ways of looking at this. And whether you were like us uh, two and a half years ago and, and just really messed up, we had a lot of growth that we needed to experience in a very short period of time. Or whether you've started that journey of evolution with your marketing and sales alignment and you're speaking that common language and your people want more, there's an opportunity for each and every one of you in the room today to to better align your sales process in your, your buyer's journey. And whether you're utilizing the creative tools within Savo and you do it right from the beginning or you get started you know, paving some sidewalks and then you know, seeing where it takes you, you have an opportunity to help arm your sales organization to think more like your buyers. And isn't it a lot easier to sell when you can think like your buyer? So, on behalf of Gary and myself, I just want to say thank you very, very much for providing us this opportunity to share our story with you. Uh, hopefully some of it resonated with you. If anything, hopefully it killed the time really quickly before we get to drinks in just a, uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes. But thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you a little bit later.